The We Think Collective podcast is brought to you in part by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial membership at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. We Think Collective is also supported by May May Jewelry in Atwater Village. For 15% off your order, enter promo code WTC podcast at maymayjewelry.com. That's M A E M A E jewelry.com. Tim's got that perfect radio voice. Maybe we should ask him to rap our intro. But does Tim even rap? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> hey, Tim, you want to give it a try? Sit back and relax your mind. You're tuned in to a good time. Unwind. Maybe spark one up, cause these chicks are random as fuck. Conversations as real as their asses, so listen up, men. Pull out your glasses, no topics taboo, but they ain't rude. Giving that real shit without the two. Two ladies tackle the challenge of our time, exploring the gravity of the feminine mind. Oh yeah, Tim! <laughs> Get him, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the We Think Collective Podcast. With your hosts, Heidi Bach and Rena May. Hello, and welcome to We Think Collective podcast. I'm Heidi. And I am Rena May. Rena May. That is me. <laughs> wow. So, um, this is our first podcast since we went public. <laughs> Um, I have so many thoughts. I have so many questions. I have so many things lingering. But the first and foremost is number one, I want to thank you for the many of you that have given me the feedback that I have the world's sexiest voice co star on a podcast. (laughs) I'm sorry. Um, for all of y'all clapping with me, yes, you're welcome, Heidi Bach. <laughs> yes. Oh well, thank you. She thank doesn't. You. Like, she doesn't. She, I have my podcast voice. Yeah, she <laughs> wants to admit it, but literally, one of my guy friends called me and he said, "Who is that on the podcast with you?" And I was like, "Duh, it's my panda, Heidi Bach." And he's all like, "Holy <laughs> shit!" <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that meant, but I'm gonna think it's good. <clears throat> I'm going to take it as a compliment. So. Take it. Take Thank it. you. Thank you for that. Take it. Yeah. And just thanks everybody for, for your feedback we've had. Um, I'm sure there's, there's our hater, um, Becky out there. Uh, that's not the, that's not her name. We took that from the Beyonce song, just to be clear. <laughs> if there's any Becky's listening, we love you, but we know we've got our haters. Um, most that's of them haven't funny. had the balls to come and say anything to us yet. <laughs> Can I say that I'm wearing the Becky shirt right now? Totally this is the Beyonce way. Becky you with are. the good hair. Two fingers up. Watch what? our video. better call Becky, Becky with the good hair. Mm. Mm. Oh. Yeah, Beyonce, okay. call me. I can back up singing. Yeah, right? We're ready for a tour. Um, no, but we actually have had so much positive feedback from you guys and lots of great conversations sparked as a result of this podcast, which was our intention. Um, you know, we don't claim to be the experts of the world. <laughs> um, and frankly, we haven't even brought not on anybody else who claimed to be an expert yet. We brought on someone who's a feng shui teacher and refused to be called an expert. We brought on uh, a lady who wants to help girls see that they're dope. And we brought in a guy who says he's just a bartender. So we basically were not experts. Um, but what we are, we're conversationalists. Yeah. And we know that a lot of these conversations that we're having, a lot of you want to have with us. So thank you. So mm-hmm. go to our Instagram, hit us up, send us a message on our our website. But yeah, the conversations have been freaking awesome since having this podcast. Yeah, for real. Yeah. And I think... One conversation that came up, I mean, we've talked a little bit about what inspired us to start this podcast in the first place. And obviously everything that's happening in our political environment right now, everything that happened in the beginning of the Me Too movement, the Time's Up movement, all these other things, what were a part of it. And one of the biggest reasons why we decided to start this podcast as we were talking amongst uh, ourselves about it, we were asking what's missing from the conversation. And... We are humbly attempting to address that here, knowing that there's a lot of complexity to the divide that kind of exists right now between individual human to individual human, as well as 
male to female, as well as just the masculine to feminine energy, notwithstanding any gender, right? And yep. There's so much contrast happening. I don't think we have the answers, but we have questions and we want to challenge the way that we look at things and explore if there might be a new perspective on things that we could adopt that feels better, that's more empowering for more people. Yes. So we started this, a real conversation. Obviously, the Me Too movement was really big last year. Mm -hmm. And it sparked a lot of things, especially in women, about how, let's just start in the beginning first, Hyde, because mm -hmm. this system, let's be honest here, was made for men by men. Yeah. And we've addressed that before in other podcasts. <clears throat> and we've also addressed how women are objectified in the media for the longest time ever. Yeah. And... That's what we want to bring to light. And that's what we're talking about here. But we're also talking about how, like, these are conversations we never really... Did you know that about 25% of women claim that they've been abused in the workplace? I think that's like a minimum. Like... Because supposedly it's extremely underreported. <laughs> and, and I wonder why. Well, because I actually did a little research on that, Rena May. Good job. Good job. Um, why do you think they get underreported? Well, because 75% of women who do report some kind of sexual harassment in the workplace get retaliated against for that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you're going to get retaliated against almost indefinitely, like for sure, you might not want to report it. That was the culture. That was, it was a, a, a culture of abuse. It's been a culture of abuse. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit earlier before we came to this podcast today with one of our collective club members. Um, you know, we have, we think collective as a, as a club for women entrepreneurs, but we also have this podcast and guys are allowed to listen. Just, you know, thanks guys. But, thanks guys. <laughs> thanks guys. But you know, with it, with our members, we really, we have all these crazy conversations and one of them is kind of a fucking badass, like high priestess. I don't even know. Is that, are we allowed to call her that? We might have to edit this. Is, is she out as a high priestess? I don't even know if I can call her anything but that right now. Yeah. That would do her a disservice. Yeah. Totally. So I'm going with it. Yeah. So she's talking to us about how, what is happening with Me Too? What is happening in the divide between the masculine and feminine? And what is really needed is healing. And where it started is this wound began a long time ago when the priestesses, the temples were destroyed and torn down. And the feminine and the power of feminine was crushed thrown out and forever vilified as witches, as, you know, all these other things. And so then women, you know, we shrunk and we became less than, and we lost tune with our feminine power and what that looks like and what that feels like. And what she was saying to us today was just, I think, really powerful about what we can do as women for one another, but also how we need men to help us. Absolutely. So Heidi and I have been experiencing a lot of different experience with men lately. Okay. That sounded really like dirty. And sexual. I know. Okay. First we of all, did not mean it like that. Not in a sexual way like that, but in a really get your minds out of the gutter. A, <laughs> a heart based healing. She called it something called the sister wound. Mm -hmm. And I've never heard that term before. Me neither. And I was kind of like a sister wound. What is that like? So what did that mean for you? You know, when she said it, I think what she was implying was that it's kind of a wound that um, all women or those who identify as women um, share in that having our feminine attacked, uh, it's almost like it left an imprint on our DNA mm. of this pain or this trauma or whatever. And that that's a part of why women, we continue to compete with one another, why we, um, you know, there's this whole, we talked about, we've talked about this before, and I feel like we're rambling, but I'm going to go with it, about kind of how women often have this competition with each other, and it's it makes me so sad. And it's like, why do we think we need to do that? It's like this caveman shit from back in the day that told us we need to compete for the alpha male, and we're past that. We're not in that kind of era anymore. We don't mm -hmm. need to compete. And I think she was even going deeper than that and saying, 
the competition is instilled uh, almost like a, a manifestation of this wound that's still there. And what's needed to heal that wound is a harmony between the masculine energy and the feminine energy. Yes. And, but that we as women need, we need to be able to be standing in our feminine power in order to bring that healing forth in the men. And the men need to be able to learn how to tap into and respect and know their feminine energy as well. And that by doing that together, we can create the healing. Because the thing is, it's the feminine that needs healing right now. So that's why women are rising up, putting up their hands saying, fuck this shit. We are done. We are done being hurt and abused and treated this way. Mm -hmm. So we're stepping up. We're saying we got to speak out, right? <clears throat> but one of the things we talked about today is because of these experiences that we're having with these men, these healing, heart healing experiences, these vulnerable experiences where they are exposing their feminine to us. And they have that feminine wound too, because they have the feminine and masculine in them, right? Absolutely. And we're seeing like, hey, how do we know when the Me Too movement's gone too far? Like, how do we know when we as women are crossing over into the territory of becoming perpetrators of the same thing that they did to us? And by they, I don't mean all men are evil and they're all oppressing us. There's a system created by men for men that oppresses women and has built a system and a culture of abuse. That's what I mean, okay? So how now as we are rising and the feminine power is rising, do we ensure that we don't swing a pendulum so far that we become the perpetrators and do to them the same thing they did to us by not accepting them as men and their very nature as men and the way that they're inevitably inevitably going to be well i sure am happy we have a podcast that discuss this stuff because if so i don't know where i would talk about it <clears throat> um and the fact that i think we see it we acknowledge it and you guys like heidi said earlier we are students and we are so learning how to communicate in this way mm -hmm. um and so we don't have the answers, but we like this conversation started. We do. And I think before we go into what women's responsibility and all of this and what we can do and our power in the situation, let's start with the guys and what you guys can do. Because mm. the reality is um, we need your help. Um, if we're going to create rebalance and, and healing here, we're going to need your help. And since, frankly, you've had the privilege of being part of a system that was built by you and for you, um, you need to step up and you take some responsibility in how you can be a part of creating and facilitating this healing. So we have some tips for the fellas. We have some tips for you guys. If you guys have been asking us, how can we be a better ally to you? How can we help support women? We think this is an important conversation. That's the feedback we're getting from guys. Yeah, yeah totally. I mean, and so Rena and I were, were, were brainstorming around like, what would we tell guys? What can they do better? Um, so tell me what you're, you had some really good ones, Rena. Yeah. Tune in, fellas. To, to, <laughs> tune Pull in. out your glasses. Okay. And the first thing I want to <laughs> tune you into is your sixth sense, which is your intuition. A lot of times, especially in the workplace, I'm going to say, you have this woman and we understand you have these things inside of you. Can we talk about that you will produce over, I don't know, like a hundred trillion, manillion sperm in your lifetime and we will only produce 256 eggs? <laughs> um, no big deal. <laughs> so we wonder. No wonder we look for one partner and you guys look for a million. Yeah, no big deal. But anyway, <laughs> that means to say that your radar is going to go up. And when you see, let's just call them big titties at work, okay? And I'm just going to use this one person, for example, beautiful, has nice big titties. She shows up to these boardrooms and she knows she's wearing a plunging shirt. She knows she's showing things, right? Any man that has any desire for that is naturally. Any straight man with eyes that work. Naturally attracted. Naturally. Their secondary brain, which is the first response system brain, the penis, it sees the boobs. Mm -hmm. It responds to visual stimuli. Totally. So this is their nature. All right. So we're not getting into like making excuses for guys right now. Right now we're getting into guys, how you manage yourselves. Okay. We understand you have a second brain that sometimes overrides your first brain and that you respond to visual stimuli. And you might see her and she looks lovely in said shirt. 
with said cleavage. We'll talk later about why she should or should not be wearing that shirt in the workplace. First, let's talk about how he behaves his damn self. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about what he says or can say. Or as Heidi's pointing to my notes because yeah, she's she so forgets her organized. good things that she says. She's so organized. Um, but so, yeah, I do say a lot of good things. But so we want you to try and compliment women on other things besides their looks. That's just a really easy general It's kind tip. of so easy. Especially at the workplace because, yes, we always put care and attention into looking nice. And thank you for acknowledging that. I appreciate it. But at work, I want to be acknowledged for something else, okay? I want to be acknowledged for my ideas, my creativity, my productivity, my hard work, for my collaborative nature, um, my potential. I want to be acknowledged with pay not with a fucking compliment about how cute my skirt looks. I'm not offended by the compliment, but I think for guys, you're you're getting sometimes this feeling now of like, I can't even compliment a girl without her getting offended and da 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 da. And we'll get to that later about what, what girls can shift. But for you guys, one thing you can shift is think about complimenting her. Just take one moment and get to your other brain, go up to, to him up there and think of one other thing you can compliment her on. That's not visual. A way she makes you feel. No, let's not do that. That makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> let's not give that tip out. You know, a great idea she had the other day, you know, that you respect her, that you appreciate her being assertive and saying something. It was a really great thought. You know, stuff like that. Compliment her mind, maybe, yeah. at work. Uh, agree. So agree. Uh, the second one is learn to actually listen to your intuition and take responsibility for a compliment that you do throw out. So if you say something like, hey, that's a really nice shirt, but you notice that she's a little standoffish or feeling a little taken back, like, oh, I don't her know. Her body language. Her body language. Shows you that she retracts a little bit, maybe, or pulls her shirt closed more. Something or... like 85% mm-hmm. of what someone feels is through body language, not your words. The communication, yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that they need to pay more attention, tune into their intuition and pay a little more attention to how the compliments land and take responsibility for that. Yes. Why do you think they need to take responsibility for how she responds to a compliment? I would say that's just respect. I would say that that is like what I, what I just had a thought about is that a lot of times when you say something, instead of seeing how how it feels for somebody else, we're on to the next thought. Mm-hmm. Or we're, we're instantly in defense mode. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, and that comes from the woman and the man, for sure. It's not just, it's not just one side. It's both energies mm-hmm. intertwined there. Yeah, and I think one of the other things you said when we were talking earlier was... Um, the reason why guys were asking this of you for you to tune in and pay attention to how the compliment lands on her and take some responsibility for that is because right now women, we're learning a lot of new stuff, how to speak up better and all of these things. And, and like I said, we're going to get to that. But what you maybe don't understand is that if we just said 25% of women have been abused, one in four, molested, harassed, actually raped, it's that is the reality of our culture of abuse that it's been fostered up to this point. It's not your fault that it happened. You didn't do it to her. And so I understand why sometimes you're like, well, I'm just complimenting her. Why is it my fault? What happened to her? She needs to deal with that. Yes, she does. She does need to deal with that. And she is. And she very likely, yeah, is right now dealing with that very much so. Any women that had some things like that happen in their lives have been confronted by it on a whole new level in the last year. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. So many new... extremely present for her and it is right at the surface. And you don't know if she's been through that or she hasn't been through that and it's not your right to ask it. You don't need to ask it. You have no right to know it. Just be sensitive to it. Just be sensitive to the fact that at least one in 25 women have been abused or harassed. One in four. At least. Thank you. Yes, one in four. 25%. 25%. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, And that's just who's reported it, guys. And we gave you those other statistics about 
how often they get retaliated against and and how often it goes unreported. It's like 85% doesn't even get reported. So really, it's probably more like three in four women have been abused or harassed. And that's what we're dealing with. So it's not your fault that this that you were born into this system, but please accept and acknowledge that it does exist. And a lot of us have been dealing with those things. You didn't perpetrate it. I understand just be sensitive, take responsibility for that and own your power in this situation, men. You have a power in this situation to be gentle, to make her laugh, to talk to her about some other part of her that she can feel great about her mind, you know, um, or her sense of humor or whatever. And so that's what we're asking of you guys. Okay. We have a lot more for you that you can do, but we wanted to keep it kind of simple. So the last one really was, um, if you're asking yourself, did I just make her uncomfortable? Chances are, you probably did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, and just real quick, Rita, do you have a recommendation of what a guy might do if he gave a girl a compliment and he can sense that maybe he made her a little uncomfortable with that? Anything you, you want him to do for that? Honestly, I would acknowledge it. I would say, hey, I'm sorry if that made you feel uncomfortable. I just, you know, I'm just sent it, sensing something from you. Um, and that was not my intention. So I just wish you a nice day. Mm -hmm. Like when a guy seriously comes to me and says anything about anything dealing with my feeling, I am instantly disarmed in a little way. I, I just am. <laughs> yeah. Because for that one second, I feel that you see me. Mm. I hear that. So on that note. Yeah, let's take a break. And um, if we've sparked some, some thoughts already, let us know at We Think Collective. We'll be back in a second. Tita Meme, what did you want me to do again? Lily, my dream is to have a jingle saying for Meme Jewelry. Can you do it for me, please? Okay. If you're looking for love, then look no more. Meme Jewelry's got a lot in store. Your feelings are welcome, happy or sad. Come as you are, your heart will be glad. Meme, Meme, come to Meme, Meme. The jewelry that loves you back. The jewelry that loves you back. Oh my God, Lily, that was perfect. Visit MayMayJewelry.com to find jewelry that loves you back. Enter code WTC podcast for 15% off. That's MayMayJewelry.com or click the link in our show notes. Hi, it's Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of the We Think Collective podcast. You know, in just about every episode, Heidi and Rena are either quoting from or discussing one of the latest books they've read or have been inspired by. Perhaps you'd like to read, or better yet, listen to these books for yourself. Well, we want to give you a free audiobook download just for listening to the We Think Collective podcast. Simply click the link in the show notes to audibletrial.com forward slash inbound Sign up for a free 30-day membership trial and download any audiobook you want. If you decide to cancel your membership for any reason at any time, you keep the audiobook. Support the We Think Collective podcast by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. That's audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. Penda, 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 penda. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys... I just want to tell you, welcome back, P.S., but I just want to tell you because I'm probably going to be using this reference a lot in our podcast, and mm -hmm. I think you guys need some context out there. Yeah, what's panda? So Heidi is my panda, and I am her panda, and what is panda? Panda, you guys know the yin-yang symbol, the black and white thing that looks like um, the sun and the moon and everything in between? Well, one of my very awesome friends said, you and Heidi are a panda. And I was like, what does that mean? She goes, it's like you're the yin yang, but way cuter. It's <laughs> like you're black, she's white, and together you make panda. And I was like, oh my God, the best. So yeah, hi. fierce and lovable. Panda, 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 panda. <laughs> well, that's a nice way to come back in, Rena. I appreciate that. Thanks, panda. <clears throat> We're about to go into something. Y'all might get pissed. We might piss some women off right now. Sorry, in advance. Not really. We love you so much. Um, but we want to have, we want to have a accountability in our conversation. And we're realizing, you know, how much power we have <laughs> in, our, in our feminine nature. And um, 
So we wanted to talk a bit, as we mentioned, about are we in this hashtag me too movement? Are we going too far and becoming the perpetrators in our effort to not be objectified and mistreated and abused? So, yeah, are we asking men not to be men? Hi, do you think, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, I think you started to touch on it earlier mm-hmm. um, about the nature of men, that they're more visual, they're more, you know, they've got this semen pumping through their body. <laughs> I couldn't even bring myself to say the word. It's so weird. <laughs> oh my God, I'm blushing. <laughs> No, but like, you know, we talked about that a little bit. Um, That obviously doesn't give them any kind of excuse to be disrespectful. Um, But now that I think we're creating this new environment where it's it's, women can speak up, I want to make sure that when we speak up, we're speaking up in a way where we're standing up for ourselves and who we know we can be and not uh, knowing that we don't need to like live up to their expectations of us. Mm -hmm. We can be whoever we want to be with makeup, without makeup, with high heels, without high heels, with a bra, without a bra, um, with a smile, with a fucking frown, um, you know, with softness or with, with fierceness. Um, we want to be able to be in the room as ourselves and be fully accepted as that. And we've had all these conversations about crying at work and let me bring my full self in and all this stuff. And I just want to make sure that when we go this route, we don't in doing that say, but in order for me to be comfortable to be my full self, I need you to not be you. Mm. That's like the kiss of death. I mean, kiss of death. It wouldn't be Panda if we were like that with each other. Totally. Like our friendship, you know, it's like, um, or even our business partnership. If you couldn't let me be who I am, I couldn't give you the best of what I have. Totally. But I think so. What I run into is I get it. Like, I want to be the best me, but I want you to be the best you as long as it's okay with what I want. Do you know what I mean? You do? It, Fuck you. No, not I'm just me. kidding. <laughs> Maybe not with Panda, and that's why we have this experience together. But I'm saying in a lot of relationships, I've been challenged mm-hmm. in relationships with men. Mm-hmm. It's it, It's been really hard for me to let them be who they are. Mm-hmm. Because in some way, I feel like it's affected me and affects me negatively. So if your stuff affects mine, then eh. Right. We're going to talk about that more on our next episode. And I think, because that's a big fucking topic right there. (laughs) But I think that if we're saying in that sense that that's something we have a tendency to do sometimes, and now we're getting into this space with women where we're saying, yeah, well, let me be me. Fuck it, free the nipple. Why do I have to wear a shirt? Why do I have to cover my ass when I walk on the street? This is me. This is, and I'm fucking sexy. Yes, that's part of it, but I'm not here for your desire. I'm not here for your enjoyment. I'm here for mine. And if I want to sleep with someone, I can. And if I want to do this, I can. And that, I can. And trust me, I get it. And I live my life freely according to what I want, what I think is right for me and what resonates with my soul, not what other people's expectations are of me are. But also, don't we have to acknowledge the reality that, like you said, that girl comes in the boardroom with her titties out? Like, mm-hmm. if a guy is a visual oriented person, then don't we have to acknowledge the reality that it's going to be really hard for him to not look at that and have sexual thoughts now? Totally. And, like, duh, don't act like you didn't fucking know that when you walked in with that shirt on. Yes, yeah, so much. Yes. So, this is where we're going, ladies. And I know not everybody wants to hear this shit. I'm all for the this, this slut walk and taking back these words and us not being shamed about our sexual side and not having to be only sexual and or only a saint and and this whole idea that a woman can't be all of that right that's bullshit yes we can and we are and deal with it and also ladies like can we allow men to be men and not have that impede upon our ability to be ourselves where's our responsibility in that (sighs) A lot, a lot of responsibility, but taking charge of your own energy in it. I think that's where a lot of responsibility right. comes in because a lot of times, I don't know, I blame the other person. 
you know, and I don't come in there as powerful as I could have. I think about a lot of men that I've been in relationship with. And I look at how I could have transmuted that relationship by just expressing the way I felt in the moment. But because I didn't feel okay doing that, I just didn't say anything. So that's my responsibility. Right. I, I can't Owning blame your it. power. Yeah. And the reality is that because men are so visual and women are so beautiful, I mean, all of you are beautiful. You are all beautiful. And I understand there's different levels of beauty, but like we are beautiful and they respond to woman parts, period, guys. Like ladies, they respond to the woman parts. So like it really, all of our ideas of what's hot and what's not and all this stuff, I've, I've done polling of men and universally I've been told y'all are tripping. <laughs> we like lady parts. <laughs> like generally we, do, we just like lady parts. And when you come in and you're soft and you're feminine and you make me feel like a man, like I'm going to be fucking attracted to you. Like, I can't help it. Mm -hmm. You're showing me lady parts. I see lady parts. The point is, it is a part of our power. It really truly is. But it's not something that we have to use in a way that's like sexual or flirtatious, right? It's kind of just something we need to acknowledge, own it, know that if you're going to put your titties out there, it's going to get an arousal. And sorry, but you can't expect guys to not be that way. If you want to go in and do it, go for it, girl. But I would argue that maybe in a workplace, it's actually kind of disrespectful. And it's a sign of you not owning your own power and your own energy. Hyde, can you tell that story we heard the other day? Yeah, from our girl? Yes, that would be amazing. Yeah, because so a girlfriend of ours, she uh, she's an amazing, amazing person, uh, Melanie Clark. She uh, she has a dental consulting company. Um, she's a life coach. She's she's just fucking awesome. I love her. Dope. But we were talking about all of this stuff, the nature of men and women, and how we are, and how women sometimes aren't owning our our true power in conversations and 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 speaking with all of that and realizing the power we have to transmute a situation. So she tells us this story. And Melanie, if you're out there listening, I hope it's okay we're telling your story. Um, we love you. <laughs> she used to work in a prison. And she said she was walking into the, the prison yard and this inmate yells out to her some something very vulgar, like, you know, I can smell your pussy all the way from here or something like that. Right? No, that was it. Yeah, that's probably it. I have a pretty good memory. When she told me that, my face blushed thinking of how embarrassing that would feel to me to have someone yell that out to me and I'm in a prison yard and I'm by myself and I'm a woman. Like, oh my God, I would have felt like all this stuff and like almost like victimed mode. And I was I was feeling even a little, I don't know how you felt, but I even felt a little sympathy for it, right? Then I was like, oh shit. Yeah. You went through that? Wow. And Melanie, bless her heart, I wish you could have seen it. She said, so I looked him straight in the eye and I, she does her finger like she calls him over and she said, come here. And she calls him over. And P.S., this woman is tall and beautiful, like so beautiful. Mm, yeah. And calls him over, come here. And he comes walking over and I'm like, I'm laughing to myself. So I'm sure this guy is thinking he's about to get some kind of <laughs> rise out of her, you yeah. know, you know, success, Mm-mm. mission, success. Been in jail a long time. Right. A little woman, woman, woman attention. <clears throat> and she pulls him over and she says, look, I can't tell you what you're allowed to think. You're a man. I get it. I'm a beautiful woman. And you have certain thoughts about that. You have a right to have whatever thoughts you want. You do not have a right to voice those to me. That is disrespectful. And if you ever do it again, I'm going to push this little button on my belt, call the other guards, and you might have a hard time saying anything next time. I don't know if she threw the threat in on the end. I think she was a lot nicer. <laughs> Whatever. Boom. <laughs> I think in I face. added that part. In your face. But she did it. And I guess he laughed and he was like, and she, oh no, I'm sorry. I missed out a really important part of the story. Go. She said, what's your name? Inmate. Remember that? Mm-hmm. He told her his name first. And she said, well, I'm Miss and gave her last name, which is different than now. So we'll say Miss Clark. And then she said everything I just said. Yes. <laughs> and then at the end, he said, she said, do you understand me? And he said, I do, Miss Clark. And he said, she said, okay, well, you have a good day. And she kept walking. She said, the next time that I walked out on the yard... He saw me from across the way and he was like, hey, Miss no, Miss Clark, hope you have a great day today. Like, that's it. Totally mm. diffused the situation. Mm. And that's some power right there. Microphone drop. dropped. Okay. Just dropped two <clears throat> pens on the table. I'm saying that is some elegance and grace and standing in her power as a woman, recognizing that you, you can't control them being them. You 
in fact, need to actually accept that it is. It's how they are, right? Um, not giving them an excuse to behave badly or to be disrespectful in any way. And what I loved about her response was she did not shrink or diminish herself mm. because of how he was talking to her. Elegance and grace are the two words I can say if I could just imagine watching her do this and say this. And power in a different way because she didn't need to take him down. Yes. You know, or or like be offended or even like let it mean something about her that he thought that. She knows she's beautiful. Of course, men are going to have thoughts when they see her. And and to be able to accept that and say, look, I can't control that about you. I accept you that you're a man and you have, you're built this way. I get it but you're not allowed to talk to me that way. Just setting my boundaries. Don't do it again, or we're going to have some problems. All right? Here's my name. That's your name. Okay, great. Let's establish respect. I see you. You see me now. Now, if he doesn't respond to that, all right. Push that button, girl. Push that button. You know what I mean? Push the button, because there's a (laughs) lot of amazing men that would have run to her side to protect her, because she knows how to set her boundaries. You know what I mean? Yes. So shout out to the queens who know how to do that, who know how to speak up for themselves, who are teaching us how to do that right now. Um, Because I think we're all learning how to be better at standing in our power as women and not saying that in the masculine way, saying that in the way of like your true feminine power and flow. So on that note, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know if you hated it or loved it <laughs> on Instagram at We Think Collective. Next episode, we're going to talk a little more about this in a different way. That's really nice and juicy. So juicy. No big deal. Let's keep whispering. Okay. Okay. okay we love you guys. Bye. And P.S. Do you like this whispering voiceness? Because you can actually <laughs> book us to speak. Like, we are available to speak. Like, at events and stuff. Like, to who? I don't know. I can speak at a dog show. I can speak at a women's leadership conference. I can speak at... A men's leadership conference? Ooh. (laughs) Holler at us. A corporation? What? That wants to learn how to save hundreds of millions of dollars without... By not having a toxic workplace? Ooh, I like that. (laughs) All right, guys. We love you. We'll see you soon. Bye.